What's up guys, welcome to another video and in this one we're going to be talking about the Diabolical 4-Door Bronco Enclosure System. Now this is going to be a multiple part series as I slowly build this system. We're going to start with the shell today, put that in, show you how that works, and we're going to build it from there. Now I have a video coming up in December where I'm going to be going on a long trip across the Mojave Desert and a lot of other stuff along the way and I'm trying to build the Bronco out for that trip and with that trip in mind essentially. So one of the things I chose for that trip to help keep all my belongings secure in the back and kind of build out how I store everything with shelves and accessories and whatnot was the diabolical system. I've been eyeing this system for a long time. I talked to Alan at the Carson City uh, Bronco event with Bronco Driver Magazine. Really cool dude. I love how a lot of stuff from his previous aer aircraft and aerospace days have kind of been incorporated into this design. I'm an airplane guy myself. I used to be an aircraft restoration technician a long time ago on old aircraft, World War II aircraft, that sort of thing. Worked on some jets too. And seeing that aerospace engineering come into the Bronco scene is pretty cool. And I mean, just being honest guys, like he's a down to earth guy, great company, loves to talk Bronco, loves to talk adventuring, outdoors, all that kind of stuff. He wasn't even trying to sell me this system. We were just talking for like an hour and I was like, why don't you show me the system? I want to see what you got. And that's exactly what he did. He showed me what he had. I bugged him for like another half hour asking questions. I'm like, you know what? This is way better thought out than I originally thought looking at the website. So after seeing it in person, I bit the bullet, I bought one. We're going to do the show. Like I said today, we're going to go through all the bits and pieces and how it kind of works together in the Bronco and why it is not, I repeat, it is not going to hamper any of the open space you originally had in your Bronco. Like I originally thought, I thought, you know, I have my dog, I have my kid, put stuff in the back. I can't have an enclosure all the time. This thing's modular guys. And you're going to see that it opens up just like your original Bronco used to be before you installed it if you want. And it's really quick and easy and there shouldn't be any rattling either. It's all made in America. It's at a price affordable for what the quality you get is. And it's, you're gonna have to see for yourself. So let's check it out. All right, what I wanna start off with first is showing you how the Bronco is set up now. Now I have the cargo mat on the bottom from Lace Fit. I have my JCR Molly panels and my pet divider up there as well. I got my upper shelf from JCR and I have the seats and a bunch of accessories in the back of this Bronco already set up. And it's been working pretty well, but I need some security and I also need some additional storage solutions for some other things coming soon for the Bronco that I'm gonna be using on this trip. Okay, first step, you're gonna take a flathead screwdriver, just pop off these plastic covers, just one on each side for these hooks, right by the rear seat. And then using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the forward-most bolt right there on both sides. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two plastic covers, there's one on each side, and we're gonna remove it just like I did this one. They just pull off their plastic clips. So make sure you're careful and go slow. They come off with your hand. Next, we're gonna get these little L-shaped floor brackets. There's gonna be two of them. We're gonna put one here and one here. And all you're gonna do is reinstall that 10 millimeter bolt, snug it down, good to go. Okay, well next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Two of these bolts, carriage bolts, two washers, and two nylock nuts. And what we're going to do, we're going to take this panel here. You'll see it has the shorter section here and the longer section here and three holes on each side. We're going to take that and we're going to place that right here with the shorter, shorter section on the bottom. And we're going to thread your carriage bolts through from the back and into those brackets we just installed. Now it's important to remember not to snug down these two bolts all the way. Make sure to keep this a little bit loose still for final adjustment when we fit everything together. Once you get it in place, go ahead and center it and make sure it's level with the floor and then tighten the bolts all the way. All right, next up, we're going to be installing brackets. If you have a hard top, you're going to use this one. If you have a soft top like me, you're going to be using this one. Now, these brackets are going to be going in place of those panels that we just took out. These right here. Let's go ahead and put those in. Okay, but before we tackle 
those brackets for the top. We're going to tackle these angled pieces. Now the way you're going to install these, they're going to go right here where the soft top clips into. Make sure the bend with this piece, make sure the bend with this piece right here faces forward. So you're going to install it like so onto the Bronco. Unfortunately, it's rush hour right now and people driving by in their diesel trucks see me filming and they feel they need to gas it every single time, every day. It's hilarious. I'm very impressed. All right, this is a little hard to get off, so give me a second. All right, we got it off. Now this bracket's gonna go back on. There's a little bit of an alignment pin, so you wanna make sure that this pin right here goes into that slot and that the hole lines up and that's going to be how you want it and we'll do the final alignment later after we get everything installed all right guys this is where it gets a little iffy with the jcr system here now i have these soft top brackets and these are meant to be bolted in right there and the issue I'm going to have is they're going to be back behind where this is. And there's going to be two bolts that come in on these holes from the top to hold in the shelf that's going to go here. And unfortunately, it's going to be back behind this JCR thing. So I'm going to have to figure something out to see if I can get it to fit, wiggle it around. But if not, it's not a big deal. I can eventually make something to hold this in place better without the JCR bracket in the way. Okay, well the JCR thing was getting in the way and I can see how I can fix it. It's just gonna take too long for me to get the two systems to mate right now. So for the purpose of the video, I took the mount out for the JCR. And I'm gonna be putting a diabolical mount in. Now, don't do what I did and forget to put a towel here in the covering because I thought I wouldn't drop one. I dropped one right away and I just spent the good part of 10 minutes fishing it out with the magnet. So now we're gonna put our diabolical mount in, put our bolts up, and snug it up. And yeah, so we're gonna snug that up. See how it has these two slots right here? That's gonna be for mounting a panel that we're currently not showing. Let's see if we can pan out a little bit, there we go. That's for mounting the, mounting the panel right there, and that mount from GCO is right in the way. So we're gonna make this work. Okay, next up, what we're going to do, we have some of our flanges right here. Pretty ironic, you're not going to be able to miss them. Iconic, ironic, same thing. You're going to set those aside for now. Then you're going to get these flanges. These are like the vertical flanges. They're going to have this flat piece here. So put them down, put the flat piece up, and then we're going to get our half inch foam tape. And it's pretty easy, guys. Just lay it out right here measure where you want it to stop for us it's going to be right there cut it and then we're going to peel and stick it on so peeled it and just go ahead and stick it on I am not a professional tape sticker on her, so ignore my jagged line, but that's it. Do that on both sides. All right, now that you put the foam on, you're gonna get your vertical flanges or whatever you wanna call these pieces. You're gonna get the thing you just applied foam to. Now, this is the important part. There's one, two, three, four, five, six slots on this flange. You'll take the foam piece, it's gonna face down and away and it's going to go on the second flange here from the top. So at the top, you're going to leave one hole empty, not using, and on the bottom, the skinny part, you're going to leave two holes. Right there, two holes. And then we're going to put our carriage bolts in from the other side into the channel where we're going to put our nuts. Like so. 
Okay, so the final product is going to look like this. You can see you leave a gap right there. These two are free right here, and your foam is on this side. Do that on both sides. Okay, now we're going to get our long side pieces right here. They have this flange as well. And we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be installing some foam on these suckers. But we're going to be installing hard rubberized material instead. Sorry, not foam. It's a rubberized material. And the reason this is a rubberized material is because more weight is going to be sitting on here. So if you put the soft foam over time, it compresses and gives you more wiggle room. And then things can start to rattle. So they thought about everything very detailed. Like I said, coming from the aerospace industry, rubber. Now this is double-sided tape as well, so same thing, you place it, cut to size, and then peel and stick. Okay, next up what we're going to do is we're going to install the wings. Kind of have them semi-close to the wall as you can, but don't touch the wall. And then leave these bolts here, just a little bit loose so you can make adjustments later. But you're just going to put it on the outside or facing forward I guess you could say, with this inner flange facing towards the back of the Bronco. And then do that on both sides. All right, next step, we're gonna install this center section right here with the hard rubber, one on both sides. It's a common theme, both sides. It's gonna go in between this bracket we installed and this uh, flange that we put in. So go ahead and put that in, one carriage bolt either side, carriage facing out over there, carriage facing forward. And uh, yeah, sit and purdy right there. All right, well, it's gotten darker because I had to go inside and film my live stream for Dirt Lab, Dirt Therapy Lab, which is pretty cool. All those good guys. So coming back here, something I want to point out, and you might not be able to see. Let me see if I can shine some light. But the soft top brackets that I installed earlier, make sure you get them on the right side. I am on the wrong side. So I flip-flopped them real quick. But essentially, if you can see this one, you want to make sure that the side, that the holes will line up with the skin before you put them in. So if they don't line up and you're worried like, what the heck, why aren't they lining up? It's on the wrong side, just flip flop them. So I did that. And now what I'm doing is after I put this middle piece in, I'm putting this flange on, make sure the circles are up and you leave one bolt hole empty right here for this carriage bolt and you're put this flange right about right here and start bolting it all together. Make sure you keep everything somewhat loose so we can adjust everything for fitment later. But yeah, pretty good. Waiting for the cars. I live at a stop sign. And unfortunately, when people see me filming, they think like, I got to gun it, show off. So they go, and then go right by me. So anyway, we're back. Something I really like about this system, guys, and I've noticed installing it, and I'm not paid to say this, by the way. The uh, enclosure, it's designed right. It's designed with all the right pieces, hard rubber, foam, and the metal, even though it's steel and it's powder coated, very high quality, I might add. It's done in a way where it's, the strength is added with each part that goes together. So each individual part, it's got the, the bins in the right spot cut for strength everything done so that even though it's very light with all the bins all the way it bolts together it holds itself up the mounting points it's working out very well in that everything is very strong very well built and it's going to be pretty solid i'm stoked all right now we're going to start working on the back door system so you're going to have this lock assembly you're just going to take it apart there's a screw phillips head phillip or a flathead take it apart it all comes right off to pieces. Don't lose any pieces. And then take the rubber housing or plastic housing or steel housing, whatever it is. It's like a plastic housing. And mallet it through. Doesn't matter which side on this door you put it through. Just take a mallet. Bam. Smack it through. You won't break it. You're good to go. Once you're through, we're going to start assembling the lock into that hole. Okay, next, we're going to take the little... Uh, Metal washer nut thing, thread that on, just hand tight, nice and snug. Then we're gonna flip this bad boy over. We're gonna take the lock assembly and we're gonna drop it in. 
I'm probably going to go that way for OCD sake. All right, well, after we put that lock on, we're going to take a rubber gasket. Now, this came with the rubber gasket, and uh, I lost it, so don't lose yours. Thankfully, I have other O-ring gasket things. So I stuck it in the lock, put this clip on facing down like so, and then uh, put the screw back in, put it all back together as you took it apart. If you want to know how to put it back together, well, you have to take it apart to install it, so just reverse order. And uh, it looks good. Put your key in, make sure it turns, which mine does, and then on to the next step. Then the next step, we're going to take this little magnet strip that comes with it, and you're going to go on to the inside portion of this backing plate and on the top part of that portion. So imagine this is up installed on your Bronco. This is on the single seat side, the 40% side of the Bronco. This is going to be sitting on the top. So install that, and that's going to be a backing plate, just a peel and stick magnet for this hinge so it doesn't scrape off the powder coating. Like I said, they thought of everything on this, guys. Very detailed. All right, so now we're going to take the back portion and we're going to lay it down so the flat part of the panel is up. We're going to take our half inch foam strips again and we're going to be doing one on both sides and then one on the top. We're going to be leaving the bottom clear for this backing plate to get installed. And that's how we're going to put the hinges on with this thing and line it up all nice and pretty like so we can look good. I'm getting really good at foam. I still wouldn't pay me to do it though. Yeah. Now we're going to install this backing plate. So now we're going to take these hinges on the back side and we're going to get these suckers lined up. Like so. All right. Now we're going to hold it together, hopefully, and flip it over on this table. Now we can access the nuts and put those nuts in. Okay, next. We're going to take your eight millimeter nuts with your washers and put them on those posts for the hinges. Keep in mind, these are nylocks and they're on posts. Do not need to crank them down. Just get them snug, call it good. If you break them, Diabolical sells new hinges on their website, but they do say do not over torque these because you will snap the posts. Just put them snug, guys. It's okay. So next we want to do is lay this back panel down in the location where it's going to go and you're gonna take these hinge pins and slide them through one on each corner so that you have a working assembly. Easy peasy. So after that, you're gonna get it all lined up and installed, put your top hinge pins in, and then you're gonna take some cardboard, just take some, you know, like so. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff that cardboard in there just for clearance and we're going to go ahead and just adjust the back plate side to side until you have the proper clearance about cardboard's width or an eighth inch on each side where these pins are at and then go ahead and cinch down these lower bolts nice and tight. Okay now we're going to work on the top and it's going to be a folding section. It's going to have three pieces. The big piece, the medium piece, and the small piece. The small piece is going to be what kind of lines up with your tailgate section. So. There's going to be two large hinges. They're going to be labeled in a bag, large hinges and folding hardware. You're going to take them and you're just going to push them through on this top. Set them in place. And then we're going to fold this sucker over as best we can. Like so. Now you're going to get your 7 16 hardware again, and you're going to put them on, put your nylock nuts on, but we're going to keep everything loose-ish, so only like three quarters tight for now. We're going to go ahead and tighten it all at the very end once we get the pins in and we get everything lined up just right. Okay, now we're going to be installing the tailgate portion, and this is going to go, you see everything else is flat? This is going to go the opposite direction. 
like so, and it's going to be held on by three bolts, one, two, three, and they're going to be these carriage bolts with the 7 16 nut, and obviously don't forget your washer. So we're going to stick those right through there. All right, next what we're going to do, guys, you're going to lift this up right here, and you'll see I installed this lining on the large piece, it's this softish cushion material that's going to be a nice seal for you so just peel off the double sided tape stick that sucker on there trim to fit and we're almost ready to install all right now we're going to take our top and we're going to fold it or slide it into place typically you can install it like this and then fold it over but because i have the upper shelf i'm going to cheat a little bit Old cables in the way, take those out. All right, cool. So you got in place, make sure it's all the way forward. Yep, about like so. All right, guys, it's the next day of this video. Uh, it got too dark and I wanted to do this in the best possible light. So we're back at it the next morning. We're gonna hit this real quick, finish it up, and show you the final product. Now, something that came up that I got a little bit confused on, so I wanna clarify for you guys, is the install of the top onto the slide system. Now, the instructions and the instructional video both say that once you put it on here to take extra slide pins, three for each side, and slide them in these holes right here, kind of like we did on the front system, to hold it in place and then to torque down those hinge pins. Now, they've changed their design since that came out. And you'll notice when you open up your packaging, there is an envelope in that packaging that is very tightly wound up in wrapping. When you unbox it, make sure you do not tear apart that envelope and lose it. In that envelope are the new style system that they're using for securing this down to the top of the system. Now, that system, uh, it took me a minute to find it. If you lose the envelope or if you tear it apart and don't read it, you're kind of screwed because the instructions and the other sheets of paper that come with the whole packaging refer you to the original packaging instructions or install installation instructions and those installation instructions are not updated. So when you go to the website, uh, you'll notice there is a, a selection for installation videos and there's a selection for normal videos. You're gonna find the old installation video in both sections, but the updated technique for installing this top is only going to be found in the installation video section. So make sure if you go to this website and you're having trouble, go to that installation video section, drop that down, look at it. It's how to install this new top. It's a short, like two minute video, or you can watch this because I'm about to show you right here. And the only reason I bring all that up is because I thought I was missing pins because my set only came with four pins and the instructions said I needed six more pins to secure this. And I was like, well, I don't have six more pins. And I had tore up my envelope, taking it out of the packaging, and didn't even think to look at the envelope for instructions. Now inside that envelope are gonna be four, of, four sets of this. So each set is one tab, one nylon washer, two steel washers, and one carriage bolt. You're gonna have four of these. All right, we're gonna take our carriage bolt we're gonna put that through the top. I have this propped up to show you. We're gonna take our nylon washer, put that there. Then we're gonna take our tab and we're gonna put it like so. Make sure it's uh, in the orientation that you want for moving it. They are pertinent per side. And then, on my face, we're gonna take these two washers and make sure the rounded edges are touching each other. And then our nylock nut on top of that. Make sure again you don't strip it. It should thread a couple times, like so. And then we're gonna torque it down if you have the right uh, ratchet handy. Stand by. It's gonna be a 7 16. It does not 
need to be tight. Just snug. And it'll be like that. Now we're gonna do all four. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I got it installed. Just make sure you go through at the end and snug all the nylock uh, nuts down that you left loose throughout the process. Put your panels back, make sure it's all clean looking, and then do any last minute align it, alignment. The thing I struggled with the most on this install was these pins for the soft top. Something I will know is it is very difficult to access those latches now with this trim piece installed. So what you can do, although you lose some of the security, which is the whole idea behind this, is remove this rear panel. And if you remove this trim panel, you're gonna be able to access these pins a lot easier, the latches for the soft top. On the hard top, I'm told it's not an issue, but on the soft top, it's definitely uh, it's pretty darn tight. So take your time, get these aligned right. That's gonna be the hardest part for you. And then if you have difficulty accessing it, just remove this trim piece and you'll be fine there. Um, stay tuned, I'm gonna be doing a lot more modifications on this thing take it on the trail testing it doing some of my own stuff to it so I'm pretty excited about it check them out at diabolical.com it's a great great product I really like it and it's American made so cool your ash pack your trash